Carol, wake up. I've had the dream again, Carol. Wake up. Wake up. I've had the dream again. What's that like? It was different this time. This time I saw titles at the beginning. I saw credits at the end. It was fully formed. Were you just filming us again? It's almost a perfect vision this time. I see it. I, I see a historical epic made with no budget or a little budget, dolls being the main characters, uh, maybe intercutting with my reenactment stuff. I have to do it now, Carol. I'm 34 years old. I feel my dreams slipping away. My peak production period's behind me. Go back to sleep. We have to get up early. Why do we have to go camping with them? Well, John's got a credit card. He's got no wife, no kids, no mortgage. Ka-ching. Ka-ching? Yeah, well, you know, he's got access to a variety of vehicles. I think it's a good thing. But, you know, Carol's so cool. What's she doing with a loser like John? You know, I don't think he's got vision. I think that's where I come in. And he eats meat, and he smokes? Listen, they invited us along. He's my partner. We have to try to spend time with him. Can't you just try to have fun? Partner, do you know the meaning of the word? So do you like it? Yeah, it's great. What is it? It's a Shangri-La. I downloaded the recipe from the internet. Wow. Okay, well, what I was thinking was I have some really good footage from this reenactment I was in. Remember last year they were oh, shooting John, the movie? how many times do I have to tell you Nobody is going to give us money for crap like that. It's not, it's not crap. John, we are an anarchist multimedia collective. We need something edgy, something out there. So, have you been camping before? I mean, uh, do you consider yourself a camper? Well, I guess I've been camping for quite a while. Mom and Dad used to take me camping when I was quite young. And I remember they used to stick me in between two life jackets in the canoe. <laughs> so you must have been really young. Yeah, I guess I was about two years old. Wow. I'm jealous. My parents were so forced phobic they got scared watching National Geographic specials. So you're not a camper? Oh, well, yeah. I am now. 
When I was 11, my best friend's parents invited me up to their trailer for a week. It was on a lake with a big swamp at one end, and when the mosquitoes weren't too bad, Chantal and I would sit in the middle of the swamp in her rowboat and, you know, chat about, well, preteen things. So, Chantal and I were rowing to the swamp, and we both heard flies buzzing, and they were really loud, and we looked in the same direction at the same time. We could see a bunch of them buzzing over a big blue blob in the weeds. It looked like a lumpy blue cushion partly underwater. So we rode over to look, and I remember it was just curiosity. We didn't know what we were going to find. So we get close, and around this bob, the water's moving, and there's fish all around it. And it dawns on me that this thing, with all this life and creatures around it, is a human corpse. It hits me kind of slowly. Oh my god, you must have been totally freaked. No, not at all. I remember thinking about how much life was feeding off this bloated body. Fish, and crayfish, and flies, well, and maggots. And I could see little bugs in the water around the frayed edges of eaten away flesh on the arms and the legs. And I never had nightmares or felt any revulsion, only wonder and a huge feeling of understanding of nature and how everything works perfectly. Death providing life for something else and nothing ever really dying as we just cycle through other life forms. So that summer was my big introduction to nature. I learned to swim and from then on I signed up for all the school canoe trips and camping trips. I learned how to handle a paddle and I haven't looked back. Are you still in contact with Chantal? No. She developed into one of those women whose lives revolves around their boyfriends and who don't have time for their friends after they hook up with some guy. Yeah, they're losers. Suggestions, Dan? Well, when I was in Costa Rica two years ago... Not your exploit at workers story again. John, they make $20 a month. The Americans are turning them into trinket providers. Yes, and the Canadians. Okay, this is what I was thinking. I have this idea for a production. Belize is a jungle paradise. Yet even here, the evil grasp of capitalism squeezes the life, but not the spirit from the proud proletariat. Here, oppressed children sell their meager rations for a few good snarks to pasty German exploiters. Is the revolution far off? I know what you mean about speaking with the voice of the people, Dan, but what I see is history brought to life on a budget. No budget. People are hungry for epics, Saving Private Ryan, Thin Red Wine, that sort of thing. Dan's right, you know, that's a pretty stupid idea. Car's packed. Are you cocktail drinkers ready to go yet? There is no outlet for dissent. I mean, everything that we do, any kind of protest that we make is trivialized by the capitalist media. They, they turn it into entertainment, they turn it into infotainment. There's, we think that we're free and we're not. But every thought that's in our head, it, it's stuck in there by CNN. We believe that we're free and we're not. We have nothing. That's, the case. that's all I'm going to say about that. The little dodgeball? You know I oppose all competitive sports. It's not a competitive sport. It's not a touch, touch Listen, if you can come up with something cooperative, let me know, okay? And who brought hot dogs on a vegetarian picnic? Honey? Maybe after we eat. Christine? No, my back hurts. For God's sakes. Well, come on, you big suck. <laughs> Thank you.
sacrifice. Oh, jeez. Yeah, oh, Come by, wait. May I help you? Hi, I'm David James. I have a certificate in religion from Fanshawe College and a master's in business from the International Correspondence Academy. I run a successful publishing interest, I'm a consultant, and I'm also president of the Year Zero Society. What you've just witnessed is some preliminary work that Ambarai, the flesh mother, and I have done for Wicker Man 2000. The Year Zero Society is an attempt by a group of progressive individuals to look to the future rather than the past, to restart the calendar after December 31st, 1999 to year zero. What we have, what we carry, our baggage, if you will, that encumbers us is 2,000 years of hate and killing and death and power struggles in the name of Jesus. Now is the end of time and the beginning. The year zero society is here to sacrifice 2,000 years to the new millennium. Who is that uh, freaky looking guy? Am I? Yes. Uh, the flesh mother. He is a friend of the Year Zero Society. Despite what you think, he is not a druid. He is a person of this time and place. He synthesized the old and new into Wicker Man 2000. Millennium demands a sacrifice. And by the Flesh Mother and the Year Zero Society will give it Wicker Man 2000. A 20 foot tall human shaped effigy with a television in its head and a computer monitor in its abdomen. But why? I've explained it as best I can, Dan. I'm not sure I can make it any clearer. Well, okay, but it, I think it's the connection between your Year Zero Society and this Wicker Colossus I don't understand. It's That's symbolism, Dan. What it is, it's a sacrifice of everything I think we're all against, the rampant technology, oppressive religion. But why is there a television set in its head and a computer monitor in its stomach? <sighs> Sometimes you just have to channel the message and not feel so bound to logical explanations. And Bara, the flesh mother. Yes, the flesh mother uh, has had a profound vision, and it's my job as an enabler to make that vision a reality. I, I see the link between Wicker Man and Year Zero as a chance to free yourselves from 2,000 years of bondage. Exactly. Well, I have to free myself from this beer. See you in a moment, gentlemen. Uh, yeah, and what we are trying to accomplish is a symbiosis, as it were, of traditional... Set up. Excuse me? You're full of crap, and we both know it. That's what they thought of Jesus. Well, what do you want from us? You're underground filmmakers. You can document our efforts. And who's going to pay for this little documentary? I have a $20,000 grant from the Ministry of Heritage. Ooh, interesting. I think that we all know that... Canadian culture would shrivel and die without our government's large S. <laughs> I'd like to see some of your work. You seem to be the type of producers I'm looking for. So are you starting to understand the concept, Dan? Oh yeah. Dave here explained it more to my understanding. Excuse me, gentlemen. I'm heading back to my camp. Uh, you have my card. Give me a call on Monday. We can discuss this further. John's Wedding Video Solutions, specializing in wedding videos. Please leave a message at the sound of the... Didn't I tell you to change that message? It totally cornball. We're Monkey Pirates Multimedia now. Anyway, I'm at the Duke of Wellington on Henry Street. You were supposed to be here about 20 minutes ago, and you better not be sleeping. I'm heading over now by cab, and it's coming out of your petty cash. If you do decide to show up, for God's sakes, do not bring Apocalypse 2.0. It has my name on it. Bring one of your wedding videos or, or maybe your living history documentary. We're here in a neighborhood park looking for a man named John, a friend of a friend of a friend. And John is apparently stocking up for the worst case scenario of Y2K. He might be called a survivalist. I find the kitchen is the best place to store my Y2K supplies. After Y2K, I assume that uh, certain things like toothpaste and soap and toilet paper will be hard to come by. So I've stocked up on those items, uh, not only for my personal use, but to trade for such things as cigarettes and chocolate.
uh, coffee whitener, and some vitamin C tablets, which a lot of people haven't thought about. But, uh, you know, when the computer bugs hit, it's going to hit the third world the hardest. And down where they grow the, the fruit, like bananas and, and oranges in Paraguay or Uruguay or Mexico or wherever they grow them, the trains aren't going to be running with this stuff. So it's good to have some vitamin C pills. John, I see that you have a lot of things that need to be cooked. You have rice and beans that need hot water. And I was just wondering, how are you going to get power in case of a Y2K meltdown? How will you heat your food or boil water or even heat your apartment? OK, I, I see that I, I told me you're a pretty good guy, but I see what I'm dealing with is someone that uh, prefers to come up with negatives rather than positive. Impressive. It sucks. But that's because we didn't have proper funding. <laughs> that's what I find most attractive about you, Dan. Your honesty. So, do you have a script for the project? Uh, no, no, I'm not an artist. Uh, I'm more of a spiritual leader, like Jesus. I believe the kingdom of God is neither past nor present, but within. And year zero is the perfect now. Okay, so what you're saying then is that we can write the script, do the research, we'll have total artistic control? Absolutely. Yeah, all I want is a documentation of Wickham in 2000 and a plug for year zero thrown in. Now that's going to be contractual. You have to give me a good, solid, positive plug, in my own words. Okay, and you will be giving us $10,000 for that? Yes, as needed. Here's $1,000 to get you started. Just, uh, just sign this contract, and I'll give you the rest as the project progresses. Great, I think we have a deal. Excellent. I think it would be wise for you now to speak to Ambari. He is the living heart of Wickerman 2000. But remember, I am the living spirit of this project. Oh, I won't forget. Stop goofing around. Give me the camera. Uh, okay, tell me again why we're in a bus studio. Because your piece of shit camera isn't up to the job anymore. Now, John, we need some proper equipment, and the Apple is the place to buy hot XL ones. We're not buying stolen equipment. Did, did David James approve this? It's half our budget. Oh, bugger David James. He's a flake with too much cash. Sort of like me, Dad? You don't have too much cash, John. You have just enough. Why do you use people the way you do? Well, that's what most people do. They use each other to satisfy their selfish needs. Maybe you did it. Everybody does it. Lovers use each other for sex and back rubs and, and to put out the garbage. Employers exploit their workers. Workers trade their freedom for appliances. Mothers use their children to feel fulfilled and, and get family allowance. Children use mommy for food and shelter. All relationships are based on exploitation. That's just so cynical though. Maybe what we give to others is what's important. They can give some time or attention or love. And God didn't make little green apples and it don't rain in Indianapolis in the summertime. John, I take my strength from reality. So why are we friends then? You have David James's money. Partners. There's no such thing as friends, John. You have guts and enthusiasm and, and you're a good writer. And you have good credit. And if I'm such an asshole, why are you with me? Because assholes are good at taking advantage of people and taking money from other assholes. And you can't make movies without money or assholes. So my theory is correct. Asshole. Flake. How's the sound? It's good. Hey, Max, stay there now, buddy. Hey, Max, stay there now, buddy. Can you come over here? It'd be a lot easier to interview you if you were over here. Why not? See? Okay, don't scare him off, okay? David James says he's a little on your eccentric side, but he's sensitive, so don't scare him off. Tell us what you want! And Barai has not sensed your energy. He will talk to you from across the cleansing water. 
I'm not a druid. I'm a person from this time. My aim is to build a sacrifice for millennium. I will build a wicker colossus that's 20 feet tall with a computer monitor in its head and a television in its stomach. What are you talking about? I will set it on fire on December 21st. Why December 21st? I'm not a druid. Okay, tell me about the construction of this wicker man. How are you going to build it? The whole world is intertwined by a common spirit. The birds, the animals, even the people. Unfortunately, mankind has lost its way. Wicker Man 2000 will allow us to symbolically sacrifice the poison of our system and light it for the millennium to burn away forever. This is stupid, John. Nobody said anything about us having to construct this wicker man thing. I don't see it as being a problem. I mean, we're gonna go to the library, we're gonna get some books out, we're gonna go to the internet, we're gonna download some stuff. There's lots of information about Celtic religion out there. And what about this Umbari guy? What a wacko. I mean, that's just, I don't, this, this guy's too weird. He's an eccentric, he's a spiritualist. That's his thing. People like him create, they, make stuff up, just like us. We're I don't know, I don't like it. I don't like this artsy, fartsy, hippy dippy thing. I like, you know, this is not the kind of thing that I think that we should be doing. It's no social relevance, it's it's not serious. Oh, read boring, AKA. It doesn't have uh, to be boring. boring. It, it yeah. could be, it, this stuff can be great, and it, it's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do something that was relevant. Relevant, like uh, the Ecuadorian shoe shortage. Uh, East Timor. Oh, John, we you just don't understand. This stuff is important. This is not my kind of production. Well, we'll see. Let's just do this. We got some money coming our way. Let's talk down bar right and see what we can do. Okay. Okay, this is how I see this thing going. I'll handle the finances. I'll prepare the reports to give to David James. I'll uh, do, take care of the fundraising. What do you want me to do? Well, I think I see your role as a writer, as writing, researching the whole Wicker Man thing. Um, I see you as setting up the web page, of course. Oh, is that all? Well, we can work on the, the interviews together. We can tape those together. And I think it's a lot of work. But John, let's not break this up this time, okay? Yeah, John. Yeah, me. So, um, have you finished that proposal yet? Yeah, I'm just working on the script. Uh, I think I have uh, pretty much the final shooting script done. Okay, well, I have to get it to David James tomorrow, so it's got to be done for tomorrow because I'm taking it to him then. Yeah, things are a go. I think, uh, I think we're on track for this. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, listen, I'm going to have to let you go, okay? I, I, um, I got something going on here, so yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.
Jeez, what do you want? Why are you always filming everything? Fuck. You're a freaking psycho, aren't we? Like, come in? Come on, come on. Come on, man, I've only got a couple of minutes, and I've got to go. Okay, okay, Kevin, it's the coolest thing. I've stumbled upon an idea that I know you're going to love, okay? Wicker Man 2000. It was brought to me by Ambari the Flesh Mother through David James, who's head of the Azura Society. And what it is... You're on crock, John. Look, what, what, no, 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 what it is, it's, a, it's an effigy, 20 feet tall. It has a, a television in the head, mm -hmm. a TV in the abdomen. I need some sort of tripod device that's going to hold it up. It's made of uh, something, I'm not sure what, um, wood, straw, something along those lines. Yeah, but why are you bringing this to me? You're a shop teacher, you're, you're the guy, you're the man with the plan. You have the technical knowledge that I don't have. You can help me put this together. You're, you're basic that way. Yeah, but John, look, you know, I've been divorced from your sister for the last eight years, and, you know, I didn't care about your nonsense then. Like, what makes you think I'm going to care about it now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess what my primary problem is right now, the solution that I have to get is the material to make it out of. Do I make it, going to make it out of wood? Am I going to make it out of glass? Am I going to make it out of steel? How am I going to make it stand? How is it going to burn? Um, Ambari is looking for something that... Uh, I've got to go to John. That's it, man. Let's go. So what do you suggest? Uh, I don't care. Paper mache. So, you know what I want from you, Dan? Well, yeah, it's going to be a medium shot of you walking on the water, like um, that, that guy, that, what's his name there? So how's the project developing? Oh, it's great. I'm really happy with it. But listen, we're going to be shooting next weekend, so I could use another thou or so, because I want to secure some digital. Dan Gabara, uh, was your interview a success? Oh, yeah, it was great. He's got a very compelling message. Don't be seduced by their message. Keep your eyes on the true light. Well, um, our light's starting to fade a bit here, so I'd really like to get moving with this today. Well, I, you and John should meet with Ambari to give him the plans for uh, Wicker Man 2000. Uh, How's Friday? Cabaret video? Year Zero Society treat. That sounds great, but let's get moving with this right now. Um, here's your robe. This is what you'll be wearing. Uh, it's just a fitted sheet with a hole in it. <laughs> Budget. So, what do you do for a living? The flesh mother lives to breathe life into humanity. He also sells tapes and pamphlets. Great. I'm going to go and shop for a guitar strap. Do you want to join me, Christine? <coughs> we have the sketches here. We think we have a pretty good blueprint. Do you want to just take a look at them? I trust you, John. And the web page? Well, I've got something up on the web, but to be honest, it's all crap. I mean, there's no story here. What is this, this Wicker Man thing? There's no historical evidence. I've done some research. I don't see anything. <coughs> we should leave. The uh, smoke is irritating. Trevor's going to cut us. So, how's it going? I need some help, Dan. Hi, I'm David 
James. 2,000 years ago, the Gospels reported that a man could walk on water. Well, what do you freaking do? Me too. Now, I'm asking you to follow me to zero. Kevin thinks is we should have a paper mache uh, skin. What I'm thinking is to make it stable, we need lumber for the exoskeleton. Um, I'm thinking maybe chicken wire underneath to support the skin. The chicken wire under skin? John, I've got $400 to build this wicker man. But what is that, thousands of dollars out of a budget that I don't have? Thanks a lot for this, Adrian. Come on. Well, just for giving me the opportunity to work with you again after last time. John, that wasn't your fault, really. Well, I, I left the camera, $20,000 camera, on a bus. The co op wasn't pleased about that. No, well, I can rent from the co op again, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you know, this means a lot to me. You, I don't have a lot of people in my life, you and Carol, and your support means a lot to me. We've got a wicker man to build. Paper mache man Masquerade through life with paper hands Eating shit on bread with jellies and jams Diminish life and you don't understand I've got a failing voice and crippled words The things I say for the ones that fade away and I never heard suggestions? I think it sounds good. We finished the frame for the wicker man tonight. We decided to go with paper mache after all. Carol says the key to writing good lyrics is to really look inside your heart and see what the things are that make you happy or sad. I think John really buys this stuff. I think he doesn't have a lot in his life to believe in. Do you know Sometimes someone comes into your life, maybe once or twice, and teaches you things. Gives you, I don't know, a different way of looking at things. At the world. It's really weird. I feel lucky though, you know?
Dan, aren't you even a little bit worried about tomorrow? That's what makes this fun, man. It's going to give us lots of publicity. Ka-ching! What do you mean, ka-ching? Wicker Man 2000 has tremendous marketing possibilities. Dan, I'm not sure that's the spirit the Flesh Mother's trying to speak to with this. John, bugger the Flesh Mother. You are joking, right? Okay, get up, get your stuff all together, because as soon as I'm done sunbathing, we've got to go set at Wicker Man. You know, I think it turned out pretty well. It sucks. You know, you're, you're just a negative asshole sometimes. No, look at it, John. It's reality. Get it in. And you're the asshole. Why don't you just quit Because them? we have a $10,000 grant? I would much rather be shooting my Belize documentary. I mean, you think your fucking vacation clips say something important? Can you stop with the swearing, please? I don't think there's any need for that kind of language. And you think that a 20-foot tall burning figure made out of paper mache is a valid social statement? Why does everything have to be a social statement with you, Dan? You're such a friggin' hypocrite. I mean, all you're interested in is the grant money. And that makes me a hypocrite? How can you do anything artistic or socially relevant without money? Look, if we have to finish the project, why don't we just try to do that, get the most out of the experience that we can, and that's it, okay? All right. Hey, sis. Hey, Dan, what's that? Hey, Sandy. It's the Wicker Man. What's Wicker Man doing here? Do you, you got my message about storing the Wicker Man here? Did you get my message back saying it was all right? No. Exactly. Please, it's just for a bit. Ambarai's coming by tonight. He wants to see it out in the open. Who's Ambarai? Ambarai the Flesh Mother. He and the Elect are going to drop by. I'm just going to show it to him, and then we're going to be out of here. Please? I see this meeting as a tremendous step forward. Just a few short months ago, uh, Worker Man 2000 was only an intriguing idea. Now it's in the basement of... Sandy. Sandy. Soon we'll be able to erect Worker Man 2000 and fill it with symbolic sacrifice. John, can I have a word with you in the kitchen, please? Now? Get these freaks out of my house! Look, 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 look. We just have to... Now! Man, 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 man. John, what if the co-op members see it? We'll be out of here in a minute, okay? Behold, Wicker Man 2000. John, please go and take that thing with you. Are you a religious man, Dan? No. Nope. Okay. Then what I'm about to tell you won't come as much of a surprise. I'm the Messiah. Jesus Christ? No, David. David Christ. Okay. I'm telling you this because I think you can help me. When I start my mission... Um, in the year zero. Yes, in the year zero. I want you to make a video gospel of what I am about to do. But um, I think that we should finish this Wicker Man project first. Well, that's the thing. I want to pull the plug on Wicker Man. And Barai and the elect have become unstable. Well, we can't just stop the project. We put an awful lot of work into it. Don't disappoint me. 
I know you are the one. All right, then um, what are you going to tell Ambarai? Merchandising. Merchandising? Yeah, tell Ambarai, Wicker Man 2000 is pure, inviolable. If you want to alienate Ambarai, I have one word for you. T-shirts. You know, on the one hand, all this is completely ridiculous. The idea is stupid at the core, and neither one of us has the technical skill or the knowledge to make a wicker man or a website. The only thing that keeps this interesting is the $10,000 baited hook at the end. I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. This has never happened to me before. Well, I don't know, maybe after too much red wine or something, but it's not an issue. It doesn't matter anymore. Okay, well, I think what it is is the project. It's, it's, there's something not right about it. I, I must be just worried. I need to get some rest. I have a poetry reading tomorrow. Christine is coming. Women and cats will do as they please. Men and dogs has better get used to it. Mother, can you teach me more? My loathings are simple. Stupidity, crime, cruelty, oppression. Time flies like an arrow. Fruit flies like a banana. Women are like tea bags. If you put them in hot water, they will get stronger. Will all humanity find the way to God, or just the chosen ones? Love begins with a smile, grows with a kiss, and ends with a teardrop. Can we truly love everyone in this world? Immature love says, I love you because I need you. Mature love says, I need you because I love you. What do you think? Well, to tell you the truth, I think it's the most god-awful piece of dreck I've ever seen. What do you think? Really? I. I thought it enunciated clearly the, the position of the flesh mother and the elect and the vision. Enunciated clearly? What it enunciated clearly was the fact that we should not be doing this nonsense. we got to get... I want, come on. This is so clear that we have to be doing something relevant. This is nonsense. We have to get into documentaries. Something that, that's worthwhile. Anything. It's, Actually, I was talking to somebody today at the church who can completely debunk this sort of thing, so we should, I think we should talk to them. Church? Sometimes I call it church. Hi, my name is Ellen Nickel, and I've been a born-again Christian for the last uh, 15 years. I've been involved in uh, various aspects of youth ministry within the Reformed Christian Church. I do believe that it is uh, with, with things in the world, such as the New Age movement and... Um, uh, there is more witchcraft being practiced, that uh, idolatry is indeed a sin, and it's something that uh, God points out specifically in the Bible as uh, something that is, uh, that wor that is against God. Uh, there are several verses in the Bible that can be found uh, to, to point that out. Um, Leviticus chapter 26 says, uh, verse 1 says, You shall make you no idols nor graven images, neither rear you up a standing image, no, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. And uh, God points out in his word that he is a, a jealous God, and he says uh, that you're to love the Lord your God with all of your heart, and, and you're not to have any other gods before him. Paper mache men Masquerade through life with paper hands, eating shit on bread with jellies and jams. Diminish life and you don't understand. I've got a failing voice and crippled words. The things I say for the ones that fade away and are never heard. Amen. Just a wicked man. I've 
gotta break down doors and just to be a man Prove myself to them before they say I can Diminish life and I don't understand So now I'm breaking down doors with plastic hands Eating shit with cheese and pickled hams Living a life I still don't understand Paper mache men Just a weak head man With twisted limbs and broken dreams, I sit in the middle of all these things that seem obscene, these blurred views of what is real. But I feel as if I could fly. I see valleys open before me, I see oceans wide, and I see mountainsides. But my mind is free. Although my body is broken, I feel as if I could fly, and I am free. Marcus, our uh, resident beatnik poet, uh, who appears every open mic night with a new offering for you hepcats out there. Next up on Cabaret Video's open mic stage is Blind Willie Haskins and the Miami Relatives doing some cool jazz work. Uh, please put your hands together for them. Well, brother, we're Command 2000. Here's to finishing this stupid project. Not too soon. Hey, hey, come on, don't smoke. Jeez. So Christy says to me, I want to dye my hair auburn. And then she looks at me and she says, oh, but you don't like it when I dye my hair. And I had to say to Christy, listen, dearest, I love you for what's inside. I don't care what your hair color is or what you look like. Good one. Did you learn that one from Cosmo? No, no, not at all. It was some New Woman magazine, I think it was. Mm -hmm. You know, John, my boyfriend, well, you don't know him well, I know, but yeah. the strangest thing happened last night. You see, we were gonna have sex, and uh, he, it wouldn't, he couldn't. Really? Yeah, but the weirdest thing about it, like, that's happened all the time, like, really, that's, you know. But uh, the weirdest thing was, I felt so relieved. Like, why? I don't know. I was just glad. So, how are things going with you and Carol? Oh, they're good. I mean, man, she is an animal in bed. I can't keep up with her. You know how it is. I do know. Christy's totally into sex, and I love it. I give her everything she needs. He just doesn't really interest me I'm not in the bedroom anymore. And we're, we're very far apart. I'm playing my guitar, and he's talking about the friggin' flesh mother, and I God knows what else, and, and, and the budget, and, and this project, and it's just... I can't think. You know, Wicker Man, I think it's captured all our imagination. I think artistically it's tapped into some stuff that we didn't even know was there. And all of us. Yeah, I found the same thing. Christy completely supports all the film work I do. She's really there for me. I love that. I think that we're probably a lot closer now than we've ever been. The relationship's going so well. Who authorized this? Hey, where's the cute one? Theodosia had a meeting. Dentist appointment. Silence! This! And he did it. You know, the one I especially like is Wicker Man, Come On Baby, Light My Fire. This is an outrage. Wicker Man 2000 is not to have been commercialized. Everything is for sale. I am withdrawing my spiritual support. Wicker Man 2000 will fail without my blessing. <laughs> It is done. And I thought you were a believer. Ambarai, wait. 
Okay, I have to try to stop. He wrote something for me? He really didn't have to do that. I don't get excited. It's not exactly for you. It's, uh, it's just a piece I've been looking on. I don't even want to be speaking. Now let's welcome back Carol to the cabaret video stage. Hi. <laughs> I am not a Barbie. I know that this point is confusing to a lot of men, so I want to illustrate some of the most salient differences between me and Barbie. My measurements are not 38, 3, 12. If they were, I would be confined to the use of a wheelchair. I have bad hair days. That's because I have hair. If I wanted to look like Barbie, I'd have to go and do an all-over body wax. I do not like Ken. Why would I like Ken? He doesn't have a penis. <laughs> At least my boyfriend has a penis, even if he can't always get it up. <laughs> you cannot have sex with me. That is because if you try, I will have you charged for sexual assault. You can have sex with Barbie. That is because she is not real. She is plastic, so you do not need her consent. Most importantly, Nothing about me is plastic. Not my breasts, not my body, and not my soul. If you have any questions at all, you can call the Barbie hotline at Plato. Thank you. What, what, what are you doing here? <laughs> he said you had dental surgery. Look, I don't understand any of this, okay? I have to talk to Ambarai. There's been some sort of misunderstanding between us and your group. Listen, our association is over. It's important, please. I've just had three fillings. I'm really not in the mood. I'm sorry about that. It's important that I talk to him. Okay, this is too weird. I got a message from Ambarai this morning. He's very angry. He thinks we sold him out. Okay, I met this guy at a bar this afternoon. Is he dangerous in any way? Nah, it's just a harmless eccentric. But the good news is he's quit and we can pull the plug on Wicker Man and do what's really important, spreading my message. So, how much money do you have for this project? Uh, several thousand, enough. I was thinking that the perfect place to start my mission would be in Belize. Belize, indeed. I was thinking you and I could fly down there, do some shooting, pick up some converts, scout around for the compound. Compound? 
Yet it's important to start off my mission in a, a fixed, warm location. God told me so. Mm. Well, my travel agent called me this morning and left a message saying that that she had some half price tickets to Central America. So if you could fund me some money, I could go ahead and get the tickets for us. Oh, Dan, that's what I want. You and me in the tropics, starting our own cult. This is so exciting. It is. And so if you could just front me some cash now, I'll go ahead and get us some tickets. What about your friend, John? Um, I'll take care of John. Relax, John. We can just, we have most of Wicker Man 2000 in the can. We can just lay low for a while. Everything's going to be okay. She had a gun. She stepped out of the bushes. She had a gun tucked in her waistband. Okay. He says that we just, these people well, are crazy. Sit low for a while. All right. Well, edit it. We'll get it out on the festival circuit. It's tucked it's in her waistband. Okay. Look, I, I just, I want to finish Wicker Man, but I don't trust these people anymore, okay? Dan, I feel my dream's slipping away again. We had on our grass, but now it's going. Just read the hats. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. You didn't see the gun. Gun schman, it doesn't matter. If if we don't get in her crosshairs, she can't use a gun. Do you know it was a real gun? Was it a real gun? I, it was a gun. I was going to get out of there. Gun? What if it was a toy? That what if it wasn't that? It wasn't you. It, it wasn't you that you pulled it If it was on. a real gun, we just stay quiet. We stay out of people's way. Nobody can find us. We could be editing somewhere. And get this thing out on the festival circuit. It wasn't you that saw the gun, Dad. John, I know. It's okay. No, it's, it's not okay. Not, none of this is okay. Mm. Hey, why are you stopping? What's wrong? Well, I think it might be doing something bad. Bad? Like what? Well, I took several thousand dollars from David James under false pretenses, and I lied to John. Several thousand dollars? What are you going to do with that? Well, he wants me to buy tickets to go away with him to Belize to help him look for a compound and set up a cult. I think he's in love with me. Oh. What are you going to do? Well, then I was thinking, maybe you and I could take the money and buy some tickets and go to Belize ourselves, and I could finish my documentaries, and, you know, you could play guitar in the sand and do that tropical thing. Keep talking. I like the sound of that. Yeah, well, um, I, you know, I could quit my job. I could call in tomorrow and quit, and what do you think of that? Say yeah. Yeah? Um, I could give you the money. You could go buy the tickets for us. I could definitely do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just feeling kind of guilty, that's all. No, no guilt. You're doing the right thing. Hi, Carol. Hi, hi, it's John. Listen, I've been having a bad day. Could you call me if you get a chance? I could really use someone to talk to. Do you sometimes think there's something more? I don't know. I've just been thinking recently that I don't find my life very satisfying. <laughs> it's going to work making people their meals, giving them medications, giving them baths. I don't find much pleasure in doing any, any of that stuff. And I think when I'm playing my guitar, that's when I feel alive and I feel passionate. Oh, well, you're good at it too. Thank you. I feel alive when I'm doing it and I think I could be somewhere down south with these beautiful people who probably don't have very much money, but they have so much spirit. And, and I just think that this is not what it's all about. There's something more. I feel like I have a greater purpose, and it's not really here. And I wonder if, if you feel that way sometimes, because you don't really talk about your job very much. Do you feel satisfied with it? Well, I think like most people. 
you know, I'm pretty dissatisfied, I'd say. And I work in a box, and it's like this tight, airless office with a whole pile of people that I have nothing in common mm -hmm. with and nothing to say to except whining about our boss. Yeah. And I mean, it pays okay. It pays the bills, but I don't like it. And I'm making someone else rich, and I'm wasting my time. You know? Yeah. Like, I have a boyfriend that I'm just not attracted to. And I don't even know if I ever was, you know? I don't know if we just got comfortable or got bored or fell out of love. But whatever it is, it's over. And I mean, despite all that, he completely takes me for granted. You really get brainwashed sometimes, eh? You get comfortable, or you get convinced that there's nothing else out there, you know? And I mean, I think I mostly do what people expect me to, and I think that's like most women I know, you know? I wonder if that's just because we're afraid of anything else, but well, I think it's totally typical. And I think sometimes about what I'll think when I look back on my life when I'm dying, you know, and what I'll see if I think about what I'm like now. Yeah. Why do we do that, though? I don't know. Maybe because we are afraid. Maybe we should all run off to Paris and get attic loss and write poetry. Hey, baby. Dan's gone to buy his uh, stolen camera, and I wasn't having any part of that, so I thought I'd uh, maybe just say hi to you from New York City. Here we are in the Big Apple. Man, it's beautiful here. I really wish you were here to experience this with us. Uh, you know, you see it on TV all the time, but until you're here, you don't get the full impact, I guess. Uh, you know, maybe you and I could come back at, at Christmas time. I, I hear the lights are beautiful. They have the Times Square all done out in Christmas lights. You know, it's, I think that would be beautiful. Um, anyway, I hope you're, you're watching this with me now, sitting beside me. Uh, I just wanted you to know that I was thinking about you while I was here. And, you know, if you're here, let's lean over and give me a great big kiss. That's my new to you. Anyway, I love you, baby. Carol, is that you? Yeah, it's me. Hi. Hi. You look awful. Thanks, this, oh, Carol, I've been waiting to see you. I think the flesh mother's after me. I've been freaked. Well, whatever. I can only stay for a second. I uh, came back because I need to borrow your camera. You need to borrow my camera? You're I haven't seen you in three days, and you're coming to borrow my camera? Well, I'll come back. I promise. Do you promise? I have to talk. Seriously, I have to talk about a few things. Sure. I'll see you. Watching this, honey, we're already in in Belize, probably Carol and I. And oh, I'm sorry. I probably don't think I'm very sincere, <laughs> but I, I am. I'm sorry. But you and John just you got way off with this wicker man thing. You're kind of knobs. Yeah. Okay, it's your turn. Okay, okay, okay. I'm coming. Okay, 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 okay. Oh. All right. Hi, 
Hi, John. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, that's your camera. <laughs> we borrowed it, but um, we'll we'll get it back to you. Okay? Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Here, honey. Anyway, um, I I hope that you and John can work things out with Ambari, and I hope that you know no one gets shot or anything, and and good luck with everything. Yeah, good luck, John. <laughs> Feel me? <laughs> oh, and just so you don't ever forget me, here's something to remember me by. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, hi John, it's Dan. Listen, I think that we've got a major money maker here. Uh, porn streaming on the World Wide Web. Big bucks. Oh, and I think that Carol may have stolen your video camera. Ciao, baby. Thank you. 